Welcome to the Savannah Podcasting Meetup for May <laughs> of 2020. I almost forgot what month it was. For May of 2020, uh, myself, Raz, and Mr. Henrik DeGior is here today. DeGior, which way is right? DeGior. Yeah. Okay, good. It. Thank yeah. you. Mr. Henrik DeGior is here. And uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk about um, finding great guests for your podcast and ways we do it and Actually, Herrick, I might let you go for it. I might let you go first um, as I think about how I do it, but I also have a list of uh, services and resources as, um, you know, as a way of resources to help you find great guests as well. Cool. So, Henrik, if you if you'd like to start this time. Sure, of course. No worries. Uh, thanks, Raz, and thanks for having me on the show again. Um, right. So... Yeah, thanks. So the um, the way I, I get guests, at, and keep in mind, I have seven different podcasts, so it varies. <laughs> yeah. um, but the way I've, I've used to do it is I would go on LinkedIn and find someone that's relevant to the topic. Um, keep in mind, most of mine are uh, niche business topics for the most part. Um, and the, the one I, I do the most, the, the the most senior of, of all the podcasts is about 10 years old. It's called Another Damn Podcast, uh, another D-A-M podcast.com. And uh, it, th they're all about digital asset management. So D-A-M is a play on words, of course. And um, the, the way I do it is I look, go on LinkedIn and I find people under that topic. So I do digital asset management in quotes, find people, uh, connect with them, and basically give them a, 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 in the connection before you actually just hit connect, you can invite with a, some kind of note mm -hmm. um, and you say, hey, as a fellow person interested in topic X, um, I would love to interview you about this topic. And if you connect with me, I'll send you the questions. And this, mm -hmm. gives, you, this gives them an in or out, right? But where they're either interested at, or they're super busy and not, right? Uh, or they're going to connect with me. With me. Um, and if they connect with me, I'll, I'll have their email address and I can email them the questions and the intent that's really, really important is, is the intent, your intent of what you're going to do with this podcast. So my intent, I clearly de de define that I'm going to transcribe it. I'm mm -hmm. going to record it. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to give them the opportunity to review the edits after I finish it before I release it. So there's trust built in there mm -hmm. and I will likely build a, a book out of that transcript. Um, and what I'll typically do and nowadays, like I, what I did for the last few podcasts that I've done, like um, user adoption podcast, uh, that's useradoptionpodcast.com, is I interviewed 50 some people first. I transcribed them all, created a book out of the transcripts and what, they, what the valued statements that I, that I asked them. And mm -hmm. keep in mind, when I asked them questions, they're boilerplate, like four or five questions that I asked every single person. Mm -hmm. Um, and I gave them the questions ahead of time so they could ponder them, understand what, what's, what's, what's he going to ask me, right? That kind of stuff. So they can think about it. They can go, oh, okay. Yeah, I have answers to this. And here's my mm. bullet, bullet points. Not a script, right? They're just uh, uh, talking points on, I, I'd like to touch on this point and that point and that point on this question. And mm -hmm. it's a lot more free flowing if they do that as a guest um, than if they were to just like read a script and then I'm going to, people who read a script are really, really obvious and they yeah. sound like robots yeah. and it sounds terrible. <clears throat> yeah. So it does, it doesn't make for good, a good engaging podcast. I agree. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's like, Oh, you're reading a script. Great. Super. <laughs> right. Great. That's going to be awesome. Let's do this. And what I also do is I do, um, when I invite them, I send them an, a calendarly invite. Uh, so, so C A L E N D L Y.com. I subscribe to that and I set up a 15 minute call just for podcast interviews. Mm. And in that podcast, that 15 minute call, I record a podcast, the entire mm. thing. I say, hello. I say, how are you? It's like, you're, you're good with the questions as is. And they're like, yeah. Any, any questions on your side? No. How do I pronounce your name if I need to say it? Right. Cause you know, people have different names like you and I, Russ, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, how do you say your name? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pretend to, I, to know how, how, how they're going to pronounce their name. Right. So, so instead of mispronouncing it, I, I have them say it a couple of times and I go and I repeat it to them and I go, okay, great. So are you ready to start? Great. Super. And then and I tell them in the, in the invite, in the, the email that I send them right after the uh, LinkedIn invite that they get, this is going to be a five to 12 minute interview. Mm. In, in that whole 15 minute conversation, 
yes, you can do this because I do it all the time. I sometimes book them back to back because I can, right? 15 yeah. minutes, four of them is a month, four weeks of, of podcasts. Yeah. So you can do it in less than a day and then you edit them and then you, you, you schedule them and then you're done, right? So it's really easy to do that way. And that, so that's how I, I get guests. And then afterwards, after I record, I'll send them the, the audited interview, usually within a, a, a few weeks, realistically speaking, because I'll, I'll bulk interview everything. I do everything in batches. Mm -hmm. It's so much more time savings than doing one at a time. Yeah. And then you do this step, right? So you, you do a bunch of interviews, you do a bunch of editing, you do a, a bunch of approvals, you do a bunch of scheduling, done, right? Saves so much amount of time. I, I've done it the, the onesie, twosie, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop method. <laughs> yeah. You waste an enormous amount of time. Yeah. I do several hundred interviews a year, okay, mm -hmm. for all the seven podcasts that I have. So I don't have time to start, stop, start, stop with each interview. I, I, I would spend my entire day doing that. I'm also yeah. a consultant and a, and a writer. I have other things to do, right? <laughs> and just like you and, you and I do, Raz. Yep. So, so don't waste your time in just, so I send a whole pile of, in, of invites at the same time too. I batch my, my requests and I usually request people that I want to interview because they have what I'm looking for as far as experience, as far as relativity to, to the topic that I'm talking about. Granted, each podcast is on a different topic slightly. <clears throat> and I want to, I want to get the, the best I can. And of course, not everyone says yes, that's normal. And I, yeah. I, I don't take offense to that either. So uh, does that help Raz? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so do, when, whenever you reach out to tell people that you might transcribe and add it to a book, uh, do people ever give you uh, uh, any kind of, not blowback, but do they challenge you on their point and say, if you're going to make a book, you know, I want a piece of it. Does anybody ever say anything like that? Not a single time. Because, okay. they, because if you think about it, when I ask someone, let's, let's, just, let's assume you have an established podcast. Let's assume mm -hmm. you don't have an established podcast. Um, and they ask you to be interviewed on a podcast. Well, you're usually flattered, right? To mm -hmm. be interviewed. At, and not for a job interview. Keep in mind, some people have mistaken my, my podcast interview request as a, as a job interview request, which it is yeah. not, right? And <laughs> as long as they read the body of the email, they understand, like, it's not a job interview. What right. job are you? There's no job here. <laughs> it's, it's 15 minute call. <laughs> After right. the 15 minute call, you don't get a job. You don't get a, you, you get credit in the book, right? Because your name is, is said with, what, with several quotes that you may have said in there too, right? But they never get any credit uh, beyond that uh, as far as, far as uh, you know, that, that's a lot of value if you think about it because, mm. hey, I've been quoted in a book. This is, you know, so mm. in, in this topic as an authority figure by default, whether mm. you're in the podcast or in the book, right, or both. Um, I happen to do both at the same time because I find that there's more value and people consume content in different ways. Some people yeah. like to read, some people like to listen, some people like to watch, some people yeah. like to do a combination of, the two, of, the, of several at the same time. So, so there, there's, there's never people asking for, for, um, for beyond credit, um, and that they quote, I quote them correctly, mm. of course. Right. Mm. Awesome. Was, there was one more question. I should have written it down, but I'll think of it in a second. Yes. Um, how do you do so, it? So, uh, so how do I do it? I haven't done it in like a year, which is crazy <laughs> because I haven't actually, yeah, I haven't done it in a year, but so what I did was, so when I first moved to Savannah, I started a podcast radio show called the Savannah Business Showcase. I didn't know any business, don't, business owners here. Um, I had no idea how I was going to find a business owner um, <laughs> to interview for an hour on a radio show, uh, and I was a nobody. Uh, so what I did was I went to LinkedIn, just like you, and I sent a bunch of people a message. And I, I asked them, I said, this is what we're going to do. You know, do you have... Do you have a, uh, you know, 45 minutes to an hour to talk about um, your story, the story of your business and the, uh, you know, and also do a, a short lightning round. So I would do 30 minutes talking about the person and their business and whatever they, um, you know, whatever initiative they had, they wanted to, to promote at the time. And then I spent 15 to 20 minutes doing a lightning round. And those are questions that I asked. Uh, that, that's, that's the other point I was going to say is that I don't do the same questions every show. I like to kind of go, with like very little research on the person and then really just dive deep uh, just naturally with like genuine questions that I'm interested in about that person. And then I'll do a lightning round, which is the same questions every show. 
and just, you know, just trying to see what everybody's different answer is. Um, another great way is to go to um, live events. You know, if you ask a person in person, uh, it's a 90% chance they'll say yes. You know, it's a, you know, there, most people will not say no if you ask them in person. They might say, you know, I'm busy right now. Reach out to me later. Or I'll be free in May or I'll be free in June. But they're not going to say no if you ask them in person. So that's another, that was another thing I did. I went to a Creative Coast uh, networking event called One Million Cups here in Savannah when I first moved here. I was here for two days and I went there and I asked a bunch of people, uh, you know, would you come on the show? Can I interview you for an hour about your business? It, was, uh, it kind of just took off from there because like once you ask one person, they'll recommend you to somebody else or they'll tell the other people about the show. And then now you have, if you keep going, you, have, you won't have to reach out to people. People will find you as well. Another yeah, way well, I found, a, oh, sorry, continue, please. I was going to say, that's a big way I do it. And I also send a email, a follow-up email, very similar to yours, uh, telling them, you know, what we're going to talk about. Um, on the radio, they couldn't curse or swear or speak about grotesque topics. So I had to let them know that. And then also, you know, any other rules and regulations the radio station had, I had to let them know that. And I sent them examples of my past interviews. So I thought that was a good point. If somebody wanted to, instead of telling them what questions I was going to ask, I said, hey, you can watch this show to get a feel for it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing that I, I did find was quite useful is when I have a really good guest that's really mm. well connected and you can tell by their LinkedIn profile, right? But when they have yeah. well over 500 connections, yeah. most people do, um, that I reach out to, um, they, you can ask at the end of the interview, Hey, if there's anyone else you, you recommend interviewing, whether it's now, or if you think about somebody in the immediacy, they're usually either some, they have someone on the tip of their tongue and they're ready to give it to you. That, mm -hmm. that, that person's name at the very minimum, or they'll do a, a LinkedIn, you know, introduction, which mm -hmm. is even easier to, yep. to say, Oh yeah, you should interview blah, blah, blah. And then sometimes I either interview the person already or, um, uh, you know, give them some thoughts like, probe them with some, and I, I always give them a link to the podcast, you know, so they can listen to the, the format and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think asking your guests either during, before or after um, uh, the interview itself, it, it's, it's beneficial because you may get more value and more guests from them. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like the, the network effect, uh, right. which is kind of cool. Right. And you also mentioned uh, Calendly earlier. Um, another so Calendly is free up to a certain point, right? Uh, but uh, another pay service that I like to use is called Schedule Once. And it's also a really good, uh, really good embeddable form you can put on your website and just send people there or send them to a link and, you know, they can schedule based on your calendar. So those are, you know, two alternatives. For sure. Uh, so there are also services and websites that will help you connect with guests or help you, if you're a guest, help you connect with podcasts looking for guests. And I have a list of them right here. So uh, number one, and Henrik, you told me this one today, and I've researched this company before. It's called podcast.co, C-O, podcast.co. And I found them just from their blog post. They've had a, they got a few great blog posts on their website uh, describing how to set up a studio. So I've been looking at what they're doing, trying to improve my studio. And uh, yeah, and you said they reached out to you uh, recently? Yeah, today. <laughs> 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 this morning, <laughs> uh, I believe they're in a different country, but but uh, they, they reached out to them this morning. I was like, hmm. oh, uh, I checked them out. It was like, oh, that's, that's pretty beneficial. I yeah. actually don't use any of those uh, services, at least not yet. But uh, I know it's valuable for podcasters and for guests, mostly for the guests. So typically, from a lot of the services that you mentioned, they charge the guests um, because they know that they're going to get a lot of value out of them. And sometimes it's just a community effect which mm -hmm. they're trying to connect a lot of people and then, and then potentially do a freemium model, which yep. makes sense. Um, so, so as long as it's bringing value to both parties, right? The podcasters and not just, you know, spamming the podcasters, which, you know, we, we don't like, obviously. Right. If right. we have other things to do, then like, oh, let's promote uh, something we don't ever want to use. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I agree. Uh, so podcast.co is one. Um, another one that I know a lot of people use and I've met um, one of the founders of it and my buddy Ter Blissett uses and uh, I think Jesse Cole of the Savannah Bananas used for a little bit um, is Interview Valet. Uh, I've heard they've done, um, you know, been on several big time podcasts before and 
their podcasters are hard. And I think one of the owners has been on like 10,000, been a guest on 10,000 podcasts. Maybe that number's wrong. 5,000, 10,000, 60,000. It's a big number, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So they know what they're doing. They, I've had nothing but good reviews and good, you know, outside recommendations for them. And uh, I'll probably be using them pretty soon in the future once I'm relaunching my podcast. Uh, so podcast, oh, so interview ballet, I would check that, that site. I think it's free if you're a podcaster and it might be uh, paid if you are a podcast host. So I think it's free for the guests and paid for the host. Does that sound right? Uh, podcast guests, you mean? For the yes. podcast guests, you pay. Sorry, yeah, yeah, because we're I the think, podcast guests, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, sorry, it's okay. Uh, I should have looked it up beforehand. No worries. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that one. Uh, the next one is podcastguests.com. Guests with the S on it. Podcastguests.com. And that is. Uh, I haven't used this one before, but I've heard good reviews about it. I think that's free. Uh, is it free? Is that one free for both sides or free for one side as well? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's free for the podcaster. Um, okay. I, I haven't, I haven't used them myself, but I, I looked at, at the, the guests to seeing if, if it was of interest to me because, you know, I, I'm looking for niche, niche topics. Right. And it's like, mm-hmm. if you have generalists in topic X, it's like, eh, don't care. Yeah. Not for you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not for, yeah. And, and, but it may be for you. It, it depends on your topic, right? Your general mm-hmm. theme of, of what you're talking about. So, um, and then, uh, did you have uh, others to, to share? Yeah. And this is one more that I've, that I actually use. It's called a spot a guest. I've, uh, I think it's com, but I think it's like spot dots. I think it redirects you to a, a weird, let me, let me find it really quick. Yep. It'll redirect you to, you know, community.spotaguest.com. But if you just type in spot, a guest.com, it'll take you right there. You sign up for an account and it's just like a form on the back end and you can join different groups or different members, members, uh, or you can, you know, join local, uh, groups. So like a local Savannah group or a local, uh, Hilton head group or a local Chicago group or whatever, and, you know, find guests local to you. So that's, it's, it's a pretty cool community and it stays pretty active and a lot of people are on there. So it's, uh, it's, it's worth looking at too. For sure. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I, I guess that's all I have. What, do you have anything else? Um, the, the other way uh, that I found was being a, a, a guest yourself as a podcaster, mm-hmm. because uh, you can do cross promotion, right? If it's, if it's, mm-hmm. if, if it makes sense, because, you know, n- not all podcasts can cross promote, you know, if, if you have a general topic um, and, and I know a lot of the big, big name podcasters do this regularly yeah. where they're a guest on theirs and then they cross promote and, and then they become a, 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 a the podcaster takes them on their, their show as well. And that cross promotion makes sense sometimes, not always. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Um, I, I've been on several uh, recently, uh, which, which makes sense to me because of what I do and what I have to say about X, Y, Z topic. Um, so that, that good works out pretty well. Like recently I'm a remote worker, full disclosure. Uh, so I work from home or I work from wherever I have a, a good internet connection, which means, <laughs> just about anywhere in the low country right. <laughs> of South right. Carolina uh, or Georgia. Um, and uh, what, what's nice is being a guest uh, on remote work podcasts makes sense. Mm. Right. So, mm-hmm. so I, I was one uh, recently uh, for uh, one in London. Um, okay. The, the, the podcasters in London. So I, obviously I'm not going there anytime in the near future uh, as much as I'd like to be. Um, but you know, being on there helps promote, so we cross pollinate each other's networks, right? Because mm-hmm. he has a network that looks at remote work. I have a network that looks like this. So we're cross pollinating each other and, and that works really well. And then on, on, offline, we share a bunch of tips on podcasting, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, how, how did you get guests? And how did you create a book out of podcasts? And, you know, that, that kind of uh, discussion can, mm-hmm. can, be, can be pretty interesting um, and engaging for both, for both of us. Else, yeah. speaking. So it's basically back to your point around community because you are connecting communities of podcasters to guests because without guests, it's a monologue unless you have another, you know, podcast co-host. Right. right. And those work too. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think adding guests makes more sense, at least in my perspective, mm-hmm. because I tried the monologue thing. Monologue sounds pretty boring when you read <laughs> your own stuff all day long. Right. 
whether you're engaging or not, that's kind of irrelevant. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it, I think adding a different flavor or a different perspective on the same topic kind of makes a lot more sense to me, mm -hmm. um, especially when it's a new voice, kind of like Tim Ferriss does, for example. Like he has lots and lots of fans, lots and lots of different guests, well-known people that you actually do want to hear about on t varying, varying topics, but it makes a lot more sense. Makes mm -hmm. sense to you? I agree. Yes? I agree. Yeah, wholeheartedly. I usually, um, even if somebody is an expert on a topic, uh, I still recommend them having other experts come on that show because there's just so many benefits to it. Like you have the cross promotion, like you said, you have um, the, uh, and you, you kind of, you like, you get to meet your mentors in a way in your industry and people who are doing your co competitors. Some people call them, you get to meet uh, and you kind of get this um, authority by association, you know, <laughs> like maybe you're not well known, but if this well known person knows you, that now you're also an authority, if that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's just a, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of benefits to having another person on your show. Maybe they have a huge email list they can share the podcast to to help you grow. Maybe they have a huge social media following. Uh, you just never know what type of um, things will come. Like you said, in, in the offline, the offline talks that you have with each other, um, that can create all types of opportunities. So you just never know. Maybe the person you interview was looking for your services and they've been looking for somebody and now you guys are friends and they want to work with you. So you just, you literally never know um, what can come from an interview. So exactly. Uh, yeah. I always recommend having guests at least, at least part of the time, maybe not every show, uh, but at least part of the time. Yeah. 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 Uh, another tip is um, if you have a topic where other people wrote books about it, you can interview the authors because the authors, part of the author's job after they write books, right, is to promote them. So kind of like book tours, which are um, kind of on hold right now for obvious reasons, <laughs> except mm -hmm. for this kind of format. Right. <laughs> um, right. Interviewing the, the, the author is a really, really great way to get several insights from the book. Obviously, they get to promote the book to a degree because that's the point of, you know, it's like, hey, check out the book, you know, mm -hmm. and, but they'll give you like a couple pointers from the book or, or like, oh, what's the storyline? Whether it's fiction or nonfiction is kind of irrelevant, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and it, like I would only interview nonfiction writers. I'm mm -hmm. a nonfiction writer myself. So then you know, it would make sense like, like for user adoption podcasts, I interviewed the top people who wrote books around user adoption. Uh, you know, I looked them up on Amazon, see the ratings for the book, you know, um, and then reached out to them because it's really yep. easy to do so. And yep. keep in mind, if, even if they're super, super famous, they have a schedule, right? And back to Teraz's point, um, if they can't do it, like say in May or in June, some of the super, super wealthy or super, super famous people, they'll schedule you for like six months from now, mm -hmm. which is totally fine. Right. Yep. I mean, your podcast is going to be alive for six months from now. Yep, and, hopefully. <laughs> and, right. Right. <laughs> as long as we're alive. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so, well, we keep, we'll keep doing podcasts. Yeah. Right. I, I, I highly doubt the podcast format is going, you know, away uh, right. considering the news in, in podcasting and the, meaning the good news in podcasting, which we've yep. all seen around Spotify and things yeah. like that. Right. Yep. Right. So well-known celebrity podcasters are going exclusive on certain platforms, you know, all good, <laughs> all good things. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so there, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, um, so what else? Yeah. Uh, no, that's pretty much it. I mean, and also just when you're creating a podcast and you want to find guests, just kind of get into a journalist mindset also, which, because I, so I spoke to a group of a business group, uh, recently, the Eppingham uh, Women in Business. And one lady was a travel agent. And of course, like her business is hurt right now during the coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But she can become a journalist. You know, she could start a podcast and interview, um, you know, tourist companies in different cities. She could interview chambers of commerce in different cities and, you know, tourist hotspots. She could interview you know, restaurant owners in all these different places and create uh, her, you know, turn herself into a go-to source for her clients, you know, so that people want to come to her to plan this trip and she can advertise her own services on her show. You know, like how good can you make your content should always be a question you ask yourself. You know, how much, you know, how can I put 10% more in so that it comes up first on Google 
or in iTunes. So people are downloading mine more because they know I'm going to bring them the best content possible. You know, so that's just also just something to keep in mind. You're, you're, you, once you launch a podcast, you become a journalist. You know, you don't have to go to school for it. You don't have to spend $50,000 to get a bachelor's degree in mass media marketing. You just have to have a passion for your subject matter and go out there and, and do it. Yeah. And telling stories or having your guests tell stories is yep. the easiest way to create content. Like yep. the, all you do is create the platform for it, which is the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you just launch, uh, you, you give a voice to your, your, your guests, right? Not That's only right. do you have a voice on your own show by default, right? But also you get, you get people who may have never been interviewed in your, their lifetime and that's okay. Uh, some of them may stumble and, and that's what editing's for, honestly. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's because it's yeah. not live, right? So it's okay. Um, but I, I want to give a couple tips around being a guest. I think that's mm-hmm. really important. Yeah. I think listening to the show to understand the format is really important. So listen to a handful of episodes just to understand like how long is it? Like what's, how, do, how does it start? And you know, what, does it have a pile of ads you know, like every 10 seconds or something like that? like some radio shows we know of, <laughs> not yours, <Right. laughs> um, or, or something like that. Um, and then also what kind of questions are asked, right? Are they really, really targeted? Are they broad? Are they, is there like a thousand questions? Do they ask, you know, like, what's your favorite color? It's like, or, or do they ask a little bit more meaningful questions, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and do they give you the questions ahead of time? And do you want the questions ahead of time? Some, some guests have actually told me, oh, I don't want the questions ahead of time. They, they, when they do that, and when they don't pay attention to the questions in the email, they actually tell me that ahead of time. And it, it, you don't get that of a great of an interview, to be honest with you, because mm-hmm. they, um, they're not prepared. It, it's, it's really about preparation. So, so understanding the format, understanding like what's the guest's name or what's the, the, the host's name, um, and, and what's the format, what's the name of the show, you know, things like that. And, and, and understanding what, what do they want out of you? Right. Um, because there is a, a reason for being interviewed on any show. Right. And, and it's not just to self promote, but that's maybe right. a side thing, right. Just by, by, by association. And there's like, Oh, well, you know, Raz or Henrik or is known for X, right. Great. Super. But, uh, and, and you can find more about it at XYZ website. But more importantly, or you buy the book or buy the product at, at XYZ website as well. But more importantly, it's, it's what's the value to the listener, right? Mm-hmm. You're creating a listener's tool, right? So, so the podcast is for the listener. It's, it, it, yes, it is self-promotional to a degree, but by default, even if they don't even mention what they do, it's right. by default. Their name associated with your, in, in, in said podcast, is by default uh, self-promotional. It doesn't matter whether it's good, bad, indifferent. Um, it, it, it's self-promotional. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like being on uh, page 824 of the, of the newspaper. You're still in the newspaper, yep. right? right? Uh, same thing, but not that newspapers matter as much now. Um, yeah. So, And I used to work for newspapers, full disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to be a journalist. So, so it, it, asking, asking your guests the, the who, what, where, when, why, how questions really, really can go in deep. Mm-hmm. Uh, around what's going to be very beneficial for mm-hmm. the audience to understand. It's like, it was like, you know, contextual questions, like understanding, okay, so who am I talking with? Or, right, like, what's this interview going to be about, right? What's, what's the context, right? So, so you have audience, the, the audience wants to understand that, okay, who's this person? Maybe I've never heard of him or her. Um, yeah. And what, what do they do, right? What are they known for? What, what's their uh, raison d'être or, or their purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and what are we going to talk about today? And then uh, go into the questions. And then maybe in there, there might be some, some kind of self-promotional, like, hey, you want to check out more of what I do at, towards the end, usually. Uh, you can reach out to me at blah or blah or blah, right? Whether it's social media channel, email. Some people actually list their emails on very, very big podcasts, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. Um, um, usually because they plan it in advance, you know, guests do plan in advance saying I'm coming out with a book like on, this is like, you know, on this date and it just happened. The podcast episode happens to come out the same day. Some, <laughs> some people do that, right? <laughs> As we all know. <laughs> right. So, so it's all, it's all good. Right. Um, and, but 
get value, give value for the listener is the key thing, I would say, mm -hmm. not just for the podcast itself. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. I think that is a, I think that's a great show. I learned a lot already. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, me too. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for sharing those, those links to, to podcast guesting. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's very valuable to anyone who wants to be a guest or a podcaster or is yeah. one, of the, uh, one of the other already. <laughs> that's right, yeah. I mean, I, I guess another option would be to hire somebody, hire a PR person, <laughs> you know, if you yes. want to. You know, that's yes. definitely an option. Uh, yes. and, yeah. and that works even better, right? Because they'll know specifically what you want. You don't have to worry about it. And you know mm -hmm. they'll bring you great guests. So yeah. that's another option. If you're in that, you know, if you're getting sponsorships, if you have you know, a, a PR company already help you with marketing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, so mm -hmm. that's another option as well. Okay. Yeah. I, I did an interview with the food channel that way. Uh, interestingly. Oh, enough. nice. Somebody from the food channel reached out to me or actually th their PR reached out to me. Um, and, and I was able to do one. It was, it was a really fascinating interview. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching today. Um, if you have questions or if you have, uh, topic suggestions or things you want to learn about, um, you can reach out to us. Uh, just send me an email at raz, R-A-Z-Z, -Z, at pod on the go, and we will talk about your topic next time or next meetup. Uh, if you want to meet us in Savannah, you can go to meetup.com and search for Savannah Podcasting Meetup. At some point, we'll be doing these in person again, uh, so that'll be fun, uh, hopefully, in the, hopefully in the near future. Uh, but for right now, Zoom is actually great, you know. Here it doesn't have to Aaron doesn't have to drive an hour to get here, <laughs> you know. That's, this is true. <laughs> yeah, and I don't have to buy, uh, you know, bad pizza for people. So, <laughs> but I'm excited to see people in person as well. So, uh, yeah, so I think that's it for us. I'm Raz and I'm Henry Tegera. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you next week. All right, Thanks bye. again.